Hi, good day. I'm Aquila Rendell, the captain of Sand City. Um, today we are having a relaunch of the Panyard, right? Um, there are some recent events which forced us into having to do some repairs and we want to celebrate that today. However, since, um, however, earlier this evening, we had a small incident where the vice captain of the band, who, who were with his wife, decorating the, um, the, the, the space, um, he fell and damaged his, his neck and damaged his face, right? He, he's at the hospital now. Um, and uh, observing him to make sure that everything is all right with him. Right? So. How severe is the damage? Um, well, I wasn't at the yard at the point in time, but when I came, I saw um, his face were, were bleeding. They had a lot of um, tissue on his face, right? His face was bleeding, and his neck were, began to swell. He also had problem talking because apparently the, the, the stand he, he was standing on, when he fell, it, it hit, he, his face hit the, the stand as well. So we wouldn't know how severe until we get word from the doctors and so on and so on of the severity of the thing, so the injury. Yeah, these are little pics of, of when the ambulance came to the, the pannier to take him away. Slowly. Nevertheless, the show must go on. Section here 
with that section, that little section that we have on the side or the next side here, mm. is where we keep the more important, the more important pants, the pants that could be walked away with. The more expensive the ones. More expensive ones. Right? And, and this section here is very valuable to us. It was we have a little slight touches to go on it to bring it to a correct standard of security. But this is where the more valuable pants are being kept. Right? This is our area. This is our area here. Right? And, and, and from here, from here we have this little section here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the other pants are kept. If you watch up there, you would realize we have a little small thing to do, right? Ventilation? Yeah. You know? So we still have a little slight work to do. And getting everything precise. Um, Akola Rinell again, captain of Sand City. Um, we're here today for the relaunch of the Panyard, and we'll go back a little to about two to three weeks ago where we had, we could probably call it a crisis within the Pan fraternity where some, some one or some one of our members, Pan side or Pan Yard, was in jeopardy right um we had some discussion with san fernando city corporation in terms of moving us um and with while that discussion were taking place they had they had started to demolish the buildings around the panyard um hence our wall fell right Prior to that, we practiced three weeks without lights and we didn't have any toilet facility. When the incident happened, in terms and the incident, which is the last incident, was when the wall fell, it had some media coverage on, on, on the story and thanks to the media for coming to our aid and, and giving us that exposure. Um, the mayor called, and when I say the mayor, we talk about the, the, the mayor of San Fernando, right? His worship, the mayor, Kazim Hussein, called the following day. And he, without hesitation, he ordered one of his engineers to have that wall rebuilt, have our lights reinstated, and have the toilet refurbished. And we would like to say thank you to Mr. Kazim Hussein for having us in a situation now where we could be comfortable and where we could celebrate today, right? The reopening of Wipanyad or the relaunch of Wipanyad. So I'm saying to you, Mr. Kazim Hussein, thank you for the efforts and thank you for the goodwill that you, through you, the corporation had extended to us. Yeah, well, um, this is the this is the toilet area that was built by your worship, the mayor. Refurbished, refurbished, actually, and well, this this is this is the work that was done. Compared to compared to how it started out, it was in total disarray. This is the female section of the toilet. 
This is the female section that was that was done. Well, we, we still have a little uh, uh, completion to do in, in completing the um, entire structure, but we, we paint it is it is structured better. It the, the toilet the toilet facility the toilet facility is now working, which it wasn't before. It was all water and mess down and everything and it is it is proper now proper functioning also next one here and 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 you know it is it is in a better order and a better condition than it was in the past we are we are grateful to we are grateful to our mayor for the work done on our behalf because this 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 toilet facility facilitates the the youths that uh, that comes to the Spaniard, which most, we have a lot of children. So we deal with the girls on this side. We deal with the boys on the other side. We have it separated in, 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 in this manner. Because as children, we don't want the children associating in, in that manner when come to when come to facility use. So we have this section here. We have this section here where is the boys. So this is the boy section and this is the section for the boys so ag again again we are grateful and 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 thankful to the to the mayor and the cooperation for extending for extending their hands, to, for extending their hands in, in to, to, to assist with the Panyard facility and the assistance of the children to keep the Panyard going, to keep the Panyard going in order and strong. about our situation he immediately instructed mr governor who is one of the engineers of san fernando city corporation to fix our wall fix our lights and fix the toilet facilities mr governor thank you for him as well he had hired some contractors and within two three days the wall was back up the lights were on and the toilet facility was fixed right we not we are now in a space where we can practice comfortable for the the next three weeks or four weeks or however long that we would be here until our fate is decided if we are moving to our next facility or so on and so on right so we must say again thank you to the mayor we are here to say thank you to, to the mayor Right, and we are here to celebrate the relaunch of San City Paniard. Right, we have also underneath the relaunch celebrate the path God chosen for us, because sometimes in the midst of all the chaos, and we wondering what what's really going on here, you're you're, you're seeing things falling down around you. Sometimes we have to to realize that those things are happening for a reason because if the wall and the lights and the toilet facilities wasn't in the condition they were in we would not be in the condition that we are in now we have the, our new facility and so on and so on so god work in mysterious ways and we like to thank god as well for the part that he has chosen for us right so saying that we, I would like to move on to the next part of the program, which I'll clarify the controversial statement of the manager 
accusing the mayor of administration terrorism. Within the, the event where the wall fell, we had some media personnel came to cover the story. And our manager were the lead person in terms of talking to the media and so on and so on. I was at, at that media conference where he, to me, in my recollection, he was on point. He was talking about the event leading up to the event of the wall falling down, the events leading up to that event. And he alluded to the fact that there's some sort of administration terrorism happening within the administration of San Fernando City Corporation to get us to move from here onto a location that we, are, we did not accept, accept as yet. Um, in no time in the interview, based on my recollection, did he single out the mayor as the person who are involved in the administration terrorism. As far as I understand within the statement he make, the administration is, is a collective body of people who may have some that would be trying those tactics and it may have people who disagree. But we felt at that point in time where lights being taken off on us, um, toilet facilities being not available to us, they were using, and when I say they, I'm talking about the administration, were using these strong arm tactics to get us to accept whatever they provided for us. And um, we still feel that way at some point in time, but the, the manager did not single out the mayor as the person who, who, uh, who are forcefully using this administration terrorism. So we, will, we just say that we'll use the opportunity to clarify that aspect. And I'm sure that when the manager come forth, he as well will touch on the topic. Um, we'll now call on the manager, Mr. Anthony DeCaries, to touch on a little history of Sand City and the role Sand City plays within San Fernando City Corporation. So, Mr. DeCaries, could we give him a round of applause, please? Greetings. Greetings and blessings to all. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the members, the San City family, for the type of response that they have given in this time of crisis. Are you in the mic, now, boy? Oh, right, in this time of crisis. Uh, everything you see here today is because of the contrib contribution and response, response of the membership. As, as the captain indicated, the vice captain fell down and damaged himself. And this has been going on for years. Me and Moko bleed plenty of time in this yard here for the last 20 something years. But people don't know this, about, this thing about steel band. Right? Uh, base, let me first of all deal with the B in the mayor's bonnet. Based on the dialectics of the situation that was going on here for two months with no communication, having written to them since the 30th of May 2015, when we understand that they were discussing relocating us without any sort of discussion about us. Right? No. Who are they that discussing relocating us? People out of San Fernando, right? Officials who are managers of our property. I must say we are citizens of this country. This is our property, beside being workers also, right? Um, without having a history. We are the only institution that remain alive out of a, an initiative in 1990 by the then city clerk, the then administration, political and clerical administration, that we should 
get the workers together in a corporate family. You could remember that, that the corporate family philosophy that was being touted, right? Out of that, we had sports club. We had a, a, a football side that went from third division to first division. And because they left out there with any proper support, they died. We had all first club. I used to run small goal. Hippo used to run win ball. The only institution we have out of that besides San City right now is DB and them doing emancipation in sanitation department with no facility really to accommodate them. Right? San City is the only institution that came out of that that remain alive because we remain independent. We understand steel ban. Everybody pissed down on steel ban. Right? When you go to them, you go as a beggar. San City has never been a begging organization. We have never been a burden to the corporation in terms of accessing funds or running around them for funds or anything like that. In fact, for 26 years, we have been carrying the corporation brand. Then officials out of San Fernando who knows nothing about San City or the history arrogate upon themselves, hey, them fellas that have moved from here. They have done nothing for San Fernando. Check it out. What public works it have in San Fernando right now that has gone on? I say, hey, you borrow do something. We have been the only institution in San Fernando that have been working for San Fernando without any proper support from the administration. We have never complained. We, we have been satisfied with whatever humble abode that we had, and we was making do until people start to interfere with us because they feel that at least one man say before he leave, he had to clean up the yard, right? And, that, and the steel ban had to go. So there, you see, the story of San City is not the story of San City, you know. It's the story of steel ban. The, the crisis that evolved here today, is there a crisis that has evolved with steel ban? Why? We have 200 and something steel ban in this country. Supposed to be the national instrument, eh? That is number one. So that we here in the situation, addressing the situation, tells the story that the national instrument is not properly dealt with in this country. Right? Ms. Petrin. However, we've been here, oh, what I'm going to say is that unless the conversation about steel ban move from panorama to steel ban and the social worth of steel ban, social, community, cultural worth of steel ban and the bands who are functioning and doing those works like San City, I could talk about my zone, diatonics, um, Kuva Joylanders, there's no profile on us. What we do what is our plans and how, how administration and government could get in because we have a, a crisis in this country with young people and we have the catchment. We have, we have the skills. We've been dealing with it. There's bands on stream that, that is a living example of what San City does. But there's no focus unless you win Panorama, unless it's one of the 10 big bands in the country so other than that, every other steel band in this country is nothing but just them boys. So steel band continue to exist in a hostile environment against barricades of unfounded prejudice and misconceptions without people trying to get involved to see what is happening. Right? Hence the reason we could reach the officials coming here and arrogating upon themselves that we are non-entities. And they are non-entities in San Fernando. They have done nothing, right? With respect to the, as I say, with respect to the whole dialectics for two months that was going on, I, I had no other re alternative and I'm still, I, I am still yet to be satisfied with wherein is the genesis of this idea of moving San City. With total disrespect, no regard for us. I, am st I, I still have 
certain views about that. But the situation is that because of the sort of dialogue, media only comes to the Paniard when there is a crisis, to non-entity Paniard. They only go to Panting when there's a crisis. They don't come to steel bands and get the stories and profile the stories, the successes. The, we need that. We need a conversation right now about steel band as a social force in this country right now that is needed. Right? And I, I, I'm very offended that those people who who behind the machinations or whatever is happening here could arrogate upon themselves to be so disrespectful. Again, I'm saying, when I say administrative terrorism, I'm still convinced that people have been subjecting us to that. Right? I didn't accuse the mayor or anyone in the administration as yet. I hope that we could move forward. You see, San City, we, 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 have, we, we follow the mandate since we have been founded as a worker institution. And we extend that mandate to the community, right? We are worker controlled. We have workers playing. We have workers children playing. We are worker institution. We, we identify as that. We have never, this year, was supposed to be, they would build something, we would practice downstairs, upstairs would be assembly area for workers and a cultural area and so on and thing. But all of that went out the doors, past administrations. But we have had, I understand they're looking um, for, they have been researching to see what contracts and city have with them, but we have a contract. It's unwritten, it's a social contract and we have been performing. You understand? We have never deviated from that mandate. Corporation colors. Co you, you understand? Anywhere we go is the borough band. Up, up to Friday night, we mash up town in Despa Spaniard. The borough band mash up town in. Then we care nothing about that. <laughs> and, 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 and not only that we currently, you know. The same music that we was playing 15 years ago, same type of repertoire and so on, the same quality of music, is what right now mashing up all over the place. Because we're now getting opportunity to move out. And we have been, for the past two years, have been ambassadors to the corporation all over, San Fran all over Trinidad. And everywhere we play, we, we in demand to play somewhere else. I guess that is it. I would like to see, as I say, the conversation move beyond Panorama. Uh, we have a mantra, more than just Panorama. A steel band is more than just Panorama. We have touched lives over the years. We have risen up people, people to academic excellence. We have people teaching pan, we have people teaching music, we have people that go on away that leave the, the leave the music, but excel in other academic fields. Where's the story? Where's the story? So that people people but people on the ground out there know the story because people sending ch their children to San City to learn the train. But where's the, the greater story about this and other steel bands that are doing things like this? in a time when we need positive things to motivate young people. I only hope that the conversation could change. Because, as I'm saying, I don't blame nobody. I blame the whole concept that is being bandied about pan, that we don't have that respect. But you see, San City, they have to give me that. We live that, and we go dead that. Thanks. Round of applause on that, please. All right. I would like to take.
I would like to take this time now to recognize the Vice Captain of San City, who now come out of the hospital. He went in today on a stretcher and he come back out from the hospital and to the function. And this is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. And right. we talk about that that we have as as panis. We want to make sure that the show go on. We want to make sure that everything is all right. Once we could walk and once we have the strength to do what we need to do, we'll be here in the pan yard making sure that things are right and things do go the way it's supposed to go. Um, yesterday, we had two of our members performed in a talent competition, right? One of our members got the best panis of the competition. That is, that his name is Akim Cyrus, and the and and the other member is Mr. Darian Sinclair. And he came he came sixth in the competition, right? But but before we introduce Darian to the stage. Darian, in the semi-finals, did, didn't pick Darian for the finals. The promoter of the show was so shocked of the results. He called the next day and said, listen, we pull in Darian on our wild card. So he got drafted into the competition. Now, yesterday it had 17 people played in that competition or performed in that competition. A number, they, they count down the numbers from 17 go down, a number after number pass until Darian called a number sixth. I don't want to say no more. Listen, the youngster.
Let's squeeze it, squeeze it. Uh, uh, I spoke to one or two of the judges and I, uh, I indicated to them that all the fillers in, in the song, other than the verse and the melody of the song, all the fillers of, in the song, that, is, that was arranged by Darian. Eh? All the pretty runs on them, that wasn't arranged by, by myself. I gave him the, 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 the scales that he could use within the key and he put in all the runs and the fancy runs, which part he wanted to put it in. So give him a, a round of applause. And, and, and the judges was even more so impressed. So I tell myself, I should have tell them that before. They might have come first. But anyway, let's move on to the, uh, the, next, the next speaker on the program. Right? Um, Mr. Ainsley Matthews, um, the union representative for San Fernando City Corporation. And uh, we want to get some of his views on the notion of separating San City from San Fernando City Corporation. Give him a round of applause, please. A very pleasant good evening to all assembled here. Especially the little children, the young children, the kids in our midst. Kids, give yourselves a round of applause, please. I was studying what to say, you know. But listening to my brother, Mr. DeCarries, he enthused me a lot. And my enthusiasm springs from the fact of how Pan Steel Ban is treated in Trinidad and Tobago today. Really and truly, this is our national instrument. And enough attention is not being paid to Steel Ban. And it's time that the powers that be promote and devote some time into strengthening the steel band movement and the culture of Trinidad and Tobago. Because this is a culture, and this is a culture that can captivate the minds of the young ones, the impressionable minds of the young people. If we have young talent, we heard Darian here just now. And actually, let us give him a round of applause again, please. <laughs> we have the talent. It's only for the people to invest in the talent. And I have been associated with the San Fernando City, with the San City Steel Band from its inception. And we continue to be in association with them. Because just as the trade union movement is born out of struggle, and we have to fight to keep what we have, not to get more, to keep what we have, so too is the Steel Band movement. They're born out of struggle. If you follow the history of the steel band movement, they have been born out of struggle and they have to struggle to stay alive and to stay afloat. And right here in San Fernando, we see what is happening to San City. But I can assure San City that they have the power and the strength of the contractors and general workers trade union to support them. <laughs> Just as we sing on Labor Day, we shall not be moved. I do not feel that San City should be moved from here. San City is associated with, the, with Carib Street, and we must maintain the history. And we cannot allow people from all over, from all in the country, from all about, to come and dictate to us in San Fernando what must happen to our cherished San City. Because when I listen to San City, I boast that, I, that San City is my band, you know, I have boast that. I am still band man, I'm a still band lover. Myself and madam, we are still band lovers. We go and we follow still band all over the country. And when we see still San City, we feel good. San City brings a joy to, 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 to San Fernandians. It's the only band that is legitimized in San Fernando and say, because Hatters all of them going through, you could say that San City is San Fernando. It is a part of San Fernando, and it must remain part of San Fernando. So we would like, I would like to touch on the young ones. Young people, all them might only, you all might remember today, later on in life, you all might only remember a union man stand up talking. But I want you all to remember where you all are today, that you are in the pioneer of San City, and that you all must work and remain faithful and loyal 
to your band. Loyalty is something that grows in steel band, you know. Many people just leave this band and, ju and jump in this band and go in this band. But the first band is the loyal band and they remain loyal to this band. So I want you all to remain loyal to your band. And you parents who continue to strengthen your children and to give your children advice and bring them to practice, I want you all to continue it and pass the word along. And we have to send a message to the mayor. He's my good friend. At least I'm going to talk to him about it. I'm going to have a conversation with him about it. That San City is here to stay. And by God's grace, we are going to maintain our position in San Fernando. Thank you. All right. So our next guest spe speaker, representative of Panchinbego, Mr. David Balboza, chairman of the South Region, right? And, uh, and when my, my union representative say Hatta has gone through, he, he watch wrong so, you understand? Because Hatta is in, in the hole, bubbling in the hole, they just come in, right? And all steel bands, we have to know that, that within the matrix of the steel band world, as, he, as you rightfully say, is a struggle. It is not an easy thing to keep a group of people together, right? We could go wrong to all the bands in San Fernando, and we would learn and understand that it is a struggle to keep our members together. San City, probably because of the location, we could probably say because of the location, um, because of the management, and so on and so on, and we could name a few other things. We haven't had that problem in quite a, a number of years. So that means that we are doing something right here, right? That means that we are doing something right. If it is that we are considering moving, we have to consider all the other things are wrong moving that would hamper us and we have to make a decision. So it can be an overnight decision. And Mr. David Balboza would come here on the mic and discuss or, 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 or impart knowledge onto us about the aspects of moving, the good and the bad about moving, uh, based on historical reference to Panchen Bego and to the Pan movement. Mr. David Balboza, give him a round of applause, please. That is the podium. Um, just the statement that the brother made here is indicative of what I'm speaking about. Hatters is the last, last panorama, win, big band panorama in, in Sandu, right? And what happened? They left there to, to from, they, repre, they bring pride to South. Every year for panorama, people talk about, hey boy, you know, a band could be. We, bought, we had a band that brought pride. And they flung them out there in the wilderness with nobody going to ask them, what's all the problem? What we could do? How they reach from there to here? What we could do to, to, to keep it going? All your you understand? And we could go on, you know. We had ball jesters, lantern giants. We had clubs and we had entities that had San Fernando, a, a place of pride on the national sphere. And what's happening? Because officials do understand the paradigms of their responsibility beside officiating and arrogating. Right? So uh, I just want to clear up that with my brother here. You know, that is the same dialectics. That's why you find one time Fonclair was up, was Hatters, then Fonclair, then Skiffle. You understand? So because there is no conversation about what the steel band needs to keep it going, what are the, 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 the projections. We used to do screen printing. We had football club. We had martial arts. We had all these things over the 20-something years, but no resource to sustain it. And other steel bands have loud ideas, as again I say. I don't want to take the podium to But I just wanted to clear this up. Because Mr. Balboza, let, let's in, um, the South Chairman, South Central Chairman, Mr. Balboza, welcome you to the podium. I just thought I, I should make that, that point. 
honored guests. Special greetings to the players of San City. I am not here to defend or to throw any aspersions on any ban or that. I am here to talk on behalf of steel bands in Trinidad and Tobago, especially San City today. I was fortunate enough a couple of years ago to sit down with my good friend, deceased Lennox Fortune, on the origin of San City. And what he told me was, was, was real, uh, it was a kind of inspiration as to what he, he and, the, and Mr. DeCarries and the other people involved in the initial stages, what they have been able to achieve. From what, I, from what he told me at that time was that um, San C um, the city was having a, a big function, was one of the anniversaries that was very important, and they were looking for some, to do some kind of concert with the workers of the, the cooperation. And one of the things that, that came out was that um, there was a, a guy with an African name, I don't remember it right now, Itimu, um, Mr. De Kerries and Kenrick Khan. They were the three people discussed the idea of putting together a steel band. And um, Kenrick Khan, well, I think it was the individual, and Mr. De Kerry said that we have a lot of players in the corporation who playing with a lot of different bands. We could form a we could form a a, a corporation band to play, participate in the concert, which they did. They did, and um, coming out of that, we have this entity here today. Um, after the concert, I must say. It was so, the band was so impressive that one of the councillors, Marlene Ambrose, took $100 out of her pocket and said, donating $100 to the, the first $100 to the, getting pans and getting the thing going further. So that, that, that's what um, Sam told me in that discussion. He, he was, he eventually turned out to be the arranger and the tuner of the band. And with the help of other working members of the corporation, San City was born. And it is a pleasure here today to hear these kids playing calypsos that were made and sung before they were born. It was a fantastic experience for me because um, a half of them don't know the lyrics. They never heard, they might not have heard those calypsos before. And it was, it was very, very impressive to hear them play these calypsos the way they played it. And I would like to congratulate San City on doing what they have done to be continue being strong, fight all who try to oppress them in whatever form. And for those people who are out there that continually try to oppress steel bands, we in Pantry and Bago will continue to put up and fight these people. Because this, or this, this organization is an organization that is taking kids off the street and making sure that they have something positive to do. And this is what the forces out there are not realizing, that the kind of contribution the steel band is making in the lives of the young people. And until they do that, we would always be in the struggle of trying to survive. And this is where I have to congratulate San City that they have been able to get the parents and the children to form a bond and that holds their band together in the strong way that it is. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. I know we, we since, uh, since, since he's here, he said he have a meeting and we have him late for the meeting. So thank you again for your patience, Mr. Balboza. And thank you for those words and the assurance to, that Pancho and Bigo is behind us in our struggles. The next presenter, because we're trying to see if we could get perspective on, on, on all the stakeholders in San City and, and 
one one of the stakeholders that we have other than the the, the parents other than the, the children, we also have the stakeholder of the parent, right? We have Ermin the Beak, Ms. Ermin the Beak, right? Who would speak on behalf of the parent who had her granddaughter attend one pan camp. So based on, on that experience, I just wanted her to give a perspective on how that experience was. And if there is no sanctity here in the panyard. How would that affect her and having future plans for sanctity? Right? So, Ms. DB, give her a round of applause. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening to one and all. I would like to start by saying that um, Aquil have always asked of me to bring my granddaughter to play pan with this Spaniard because my granddaughter happened to born around the same time with one of his, same day with one of his kids. So I always promise him that I will bring her. But because of busy schedule with her and taking part in a lot of things, she was unable to come to this Spania to participate in summer camp. But last year, she was able to attend the summer camp. What I saw in the summer camp, because I work just up the hill, and from time to time, I will come down. I saw discipline. I saw organization. And most times when you go to institutions or gathering, these things are lacking. So I really want to praise Aquil and the team for the type of work that they have been doing over the years. I want to tell Aquil and his team that the name Sun City didn't just came about. It came about for a reason. And therefore, I deploy Aquil this evening to get a team and to start having serious conversation with the administration and the council of the San Fernando City Corporation. Because your band, the name of the band, is San City. And it came out of this name, San Fernando City Corporation. <laughs> and in those discussions, you see San Fernando celebrates City Week. We have a city day, and coming out of that city day, they have a city week. And San City should play an integral part in that function. You all must demand that. And you all can give them something to boast on. Because I believe this is the only corporation in Trinidad and Tobago that has a pan sign. You see, I make little notes, huh? but I don't have my glasses with me. You see, playing steel band is not just playing steel band. Because I could recall, I don't want to call the person's name, but a worker of the corporation who had a child playing with this band. And because of the teaching that that child got from this band. That child was able to secure a job in teaching pan in schools in Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> so you see, it is not just panorama. It has a future. And I want your kids to remember that. 
You, if you all want to go further in Pan, there is an avenue that can take you all there. And you see, after the summer camp had finished, Aquil still continued to have discussions with me. And I remember the day Aquil told me, what you're doing, come down to the pan yard, we're having something. So you see, they don't only teach pan in this pan yard. From time to time, I saw they bring in persons to lecture on different topics. So what I can say today, they not only teach us pan, but they develop the children holistically. This is my experience. So Romans 5, 3, Aquil, I want you to linger on this. We also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces preservation, and preservations produces character, and character gives hope. So I leave you with this. In everything that we do, we will pass through some sort of tribulation. But coming out of that tribulation, we develop our character. And with our character, there is hope. Thank you. Next round of applause. Yeah. I'm sm smiling from here to here. I'm feeling good now. Right after the three weeks, you're feeling good. Thank you for those strong words again by, by Mr. Mindy Beek. Right? Um, I'm glad that you, you, you were here to experience the warmth of Sun City and what we have to offer. Um, we're moving on to Mr. Swedaka Matthews, who, who were my co worker in Stores Department. We all, most of, of, of us here, would have passed through. San Fernando City Corporation at some point in time or the other. Some of us stayed throughout until retirement. And Swade and I have, have graduated or moved on to greener pastures, using here as a platform to do so. And what, what we would, would, would experience is the difference in culture in one work institution opposed to the other. We just heard Mr. D. Carey's explain how Mr. D. Then Mr. Itimu had a vision that he wanted the, the corporation workers to have, have a more togetherness through sports and culture. They, they opened a football team, cricket team, and so on and so on and so on. And through different administrations, it keep deteriorating till all the other entities have, have vanished, leaving San City alone. So without saying any more, let, let's welcome Swade to the stage, please. Good evening, everyone. How are you all doing? You know, I am here this evening, my good friend, Aquil. I, too, was a student of San City. I came and I did pan lessons here. I don't know if Aquil could remember that. Um, Sam Lennox, my good friend, he taught me scales, taught me how to read music a little bit and so on. So I too have been a beneficiary of the, 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 the work and the input into the, into, the, into, the, into the San Fernando City and the San Fernando City Cooperation. Now, Aquil asks that I speak somewhat on the corporate responsibility, CSR, the new buzzword, corporate social responsibility. And so many things came to my mind I would have liked to share, but I need to be disciplined in my delivery. And so therefore, I want to just touch on something called branding. Branding is something, anybody, everybody know Coca-Cola here? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 
Right. Everybody no chubby here, yeah? children, you no chubby? Right. You all know KFC? Right, good. All those are brands that we know. And by just by mention, you respond in a particular way. Now, you all have a brand. We have a brand. A brand, Sun City. Now, a brand may not necessarily be known by everyone else, generally, in terms of the media. But on the ground, you all have a catchment. You all have a responsibility. You all have a following. You all have a respect among not only your, your pan peers, but among the people of San Fernando and anywhere you go. I just heard that Dick said that you all went up to Lavanti, and you all mash up Lavanti, Port of Spain. All right. Well, then, therefore, you all would have carried a brand, San City, up there. And you have a brand that is established. And when you have an established brand, you have value. And, and what, we need, what you all need to do is add value to your brand. And to add value to your brand, and, and, and it's not necessarily the product, you know. The product is intact. You may have the best product, but if you don't have the right branding, if you don't have the right, if the people is not interested in what you have, then... It will not go anywhere. So therefore, I would want to challenge the management of, of San City to consider what is required to retain substance, but you may need to change form. My father used to tell me, he said, he said son, <clears throat> class is class, but form is temporary. That's in cricket. That's in cricket. That's in cricket. I called, I called, now follow me well, eh? that is true. But the fact is, we are eating more KFC than we are eating healthy food. Think about it. Why? Because of the branding. So we don't have an issue of quality. We have quality in San City. We need to develop our branding. How we sell what we have. How we can get people to understand we have something that is worth buying into. We talk about politicians and we talk about different people. But people, be and listen to this carefully, people become what they behold. What is put before people, they follow that. And Aquil and I, we would be having several conversations over the years on how to approach certain things very quietly. And I always say to Aquil, if you want to go forward with the quality that you have, then you need to go out there. And when this happened, it may have looked as... as as Ms. Debeek said, it may have looked as a tribulation, but this was something that was designed by God. That will happen for the last three weeks. Trust me. <laughs> it may have looked as though San City was having a negative experience, but the brand was placed. The brand was placed not only on Facebook, but it was face, it was placed on the national landscape. And that is important. International landscape. And that is what we have to develop and nurture and to ensure that San City is over there. San City has already done its CSR. Look around you. I went to a particular institution that is about 300 or 400 years old two weeks ago. And everybody in the, in the institution is over 50 years. I said to a friend that there goes a dead institution. The whole issue about life is seed. And look at the seeds. No one. If you... Have built anything in life, and when you leave, it goes with you, then you have built nothing. But when you would have left a legacy to continue, 
then you would have done something. And so Sun City is doing something. And they, do, they are doing great. All Sun City needs to do is package what they have, manage what they have, and give it to the entire world. And the world will embrace it. Let me just say two more things before I go. I, don't know, I do not want to bore you. One of the, one of the words um, Dick hurled at me, he said, you, you are iconoclast. <clears throat> I say, what? He can't even remember that. Yes. So yeah, he wants to, so I won't deny him that, right? I say, iconoclast. I said, Dick, maybe something. So I went home, which you ought to do, and went in the dictionary. That's my friend, dictionary. And I found out what an iconoclast is. An iconoclast is a person or, I am saying, an institution that goes against the grain, that fights against the systems and the norm, the status quo. And San City has successfully done that for 25 years. <laughs> an iconoclast is a person or an institution who has vision. What I saw, tw I remember when this band was, was, was birthed, you know. What I saw was something that came from a conversation, but what I see is something that can go to the nations. But you all are tasked with the responsibility to do that. Nobody is supposed to do that for you. We have to move away from saying pan is to take children out of the street. Yes, it does that. But that is serendipitous. Or, by the way, what pan is is human and national development. And that must be sold to all and sundry in Trinidad and Tobago and in the world. Not taking children off the streets. We do that. But it is the human and national and international development. Once you sell that, and it's a fact, once you bring that to the minds of people, people will buy into that. It will just be, it will just be not only a grandmother seeing the value of a grandchild, but we are thinking about generations down the road. And nobody could tell all about pan. All they know about pan. Nobody's supposed to tell you all about struggle. All they know about struggle. But I am here to tell you about corporate responsibility. And that is something you have to learn. That is something you have to learn. You have to change your mind. I heard my sister talk about, he quoted the scripture. But the Apostle Paul said, in the same, well, in Corinthians, no, in the same Romans, he said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you renew your minds. He was talking, about, he was an iconoclast too. He was talking about the evolution of a human being. You all need to move, uh, move not away from, but develop upward and onward onto success, onto development. And I say to, I'm saying today, your corporate responsibility is a value. Not to sit down and meet with the mayor, the mayor and the MP of San Fernando West Anis must come to meet with you all. Because you all have something to offer them and to develop them, their dual constituencies. You all have it. You all have it. So therefore, if I have it, let's do this. Have a good evening. Bye. Let's give him a round of applause again. Right, so we, we, we see in, we see in where we have persons who pass through San City, who pass through San Fernando City Corporation, moving on to greener pastures and doing well in our nation. Um, Mr. D.K. Reza had spoke about how we have crisis within the youths and so on and so on. 
the steel band institution in Trinidad and Tobago keeps developing people. And we have, we have examples of that in San City. And Swede have one of those examples. Myself, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Myself are one of those examples. We yeah. <laughs> well, we'll speak about more examples after this performance here. We have on stage now, as I, was, as I spoke earlier on Mr. Cyrus, Akim Cyrus, he came fourth in the competition and, and won best panis overall. Right? So he will now perform his piece for us, and you will see why he, he, he earned the title of best panis. Right? prepare him for this competition. So it would have been 
that he would have got the recording of the song, pull out the notes by air, prepare his own solos, and went and performed yesterday. So give him a round of applause. That's the level of musicianship that, that our young panists aspire to in San City, right? So now it is my turn to talk about the education and the future of San City. So give me a sec. We get my notes. So I'll start with past successes. The first person in San City that obtained a BA in music was Mr. Miguel Camps. Now, Mr. Miguel Camps is the son of Godfrey Camps, who was the machine shop foreman in San Fernando City Corporation. Right? The second persons went to the University of the West Indies and acquired a certificate, not a BA, associate degree, in music were Mr. Damien Sinclair, that's our vice captain, and his wife, Abina Sinclair. Now, Abina, mother, works in San Fernando City Corporation presently. And her father works in San Fernando City Corporation, past employee. Hard work in San, San Fernando City Corporation, past employee. I'm not too sure if, if Mr. Sinclair, which is our, our vice captain, father, work in San Fernando City Corporation at any point in time? No. All right. Then there is myself who went after them and acquired a BA in music from the University of the West Indies as well. Yeah. And Abina being my sister, my mother works in San Fernando City Corporation and my father worked in San Fernando City Corporation at some point in time. Next person who went to the University of the West Indies, I don't know, I haven't have a status whether she finished, how far she reached, but I know that that person had, from the university, have secured a job, according to Ms. Debeek, has secured a job as a music teacher, teaching pan in schools, and that is Ms. Gatisha Mitchell, whose mother, working in San Fernando City Corporation, present, and whose father, was the foreman of the plumbing section. So I'm showing you how the children of San Fernando City Corporation are benefiting from the program that we are having here. We have Steffi Fabian, who finished a minor in music this year, this, this semester. She is majoring in language, but she, she, she would have been able to do language and do music at the same time in the university at the West Indies. So give her a round of applause. And she was a teacher at the summer camp. And I forget to mention as well, Mr. Miguel Camps is a teacher, a music teacher. So his profession is from playing pan. Abina Sinclair is a music teacher. Myself is a music teacher. Gatisha. Mitchell is also a music teacher. Steffi still going to Steffi Fabian still going to UE. She did the minor in music, and now she's she, she's completing her major in language. And this year we had two students went to UTT in San Fernando who are now offering for the first time music, an audition in UTT in San Fernando, which is Jordan Lewis and Issa Samuel. Let's give them a round of applause. And up to Sunday, was Sunday, 
Juggy, when we went up, when we went up North Juggy? Sunday. 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 Saturday night. Saturday night, the person who they auditioned to tell me they did very well in the audition. So let's give them a round of applause again. So we're talking about the, the, the past and future successes of the band. So we're seeing that it's a growing thing and it's a continuous thing. So our program is working. Now, education in Sun City did not start at, uh, well, education in Sun City was a bit informal before our pan camps and our holidays, pro holiday programs and our Saturday morning classes. We had Sam, deceased Lennox Fortune, who are one of the founding members of the band, came home came to my home when I was about seven or eight and teach myself and my siblings pan. He then continued a Saturday morning class at his home. I remember going to his home until he, he migrated from his home into San City Panyard where he continued a Saturday morning class until deceased, which was last year. We had continuous workshop. We had Clive Bradley arranging workshop. We had Apple White music theory. We had Omze jazz theory. We had Eugene Bass music theory. We had some Saturday morning classes that, that I just mentioned. And after my involvement in the University of the West Indies, then I took over the music education program of San City, and we had. I am continuing the Saturday morning classes from then till now. So we still have ongoing classes on Saturday morning. I want to speak of some of the goals of San City. Our priority, our main goal, is to develop young talent into employable musicians. We are not here to win a panorama. If we win a panorama, that is a byproduct of, of, of one of our goals. Right? Our goal is to develop young talent. And I didn't say young children, eh, because we have older people coming to the band as well. And they might be talented. But we are developing young talent into employable musicians. Hence the reason we have so many people into music education at the school level. We are here to also create a space, to create a space which is conducive for learning. Everybody who walk into the gate of San City, this, the, the environment must only speak of, you, you're coming in to here to learn. You must leave here with value. You must leave here with a little more than you come in. We are here also to represent and promote the brand of San Fernando City Corporation. That is one of our goals, and that is what we have been doing all the time. Hence the reason the manager could have said that we went up Port of Spain in Despa, Spania, and mash up the place. Everybody wants to know which band this is. <laughs> Where are they from? And the, the, the only response people could tell them, this is San Fernando City Corporation steel band. Because if you tell them San City and we from Carib Street is long talk, you tell them this is San Fernando City Corporation Seal Band, they put a picture in their mind one time where the band is located. Who is responsible for the band? Yeah. We are also here to provide for the community, not only San Fernando City Corporation workers, but we are also here to provide to the community of San Fernando affordable music education. We are here to have affordable music education to San Fernando City Corporation employees and by extension San Fernando the community. Support. We are not sponsored by San Fernando City Corporation. A lot of persons have the view or may think that we are supported by San Fernando City Corporation or not 
let, let me just say supported, but sponsored by San Fernando City Corporation. We are not sponsored by San Fernando City Corporation. We raise our money, and all the pans that we see here today, we value it as close as 800,000 to a million dollars. We value our instruments and racks and infrastructure close to $8,000, between $8,000 and a million dollars, right? Just two years ago, we wanted to move from, from small band category to medium. And we wanted to buy, we ordered five pans. And five pans at $5,000 is $25,000. So to buy five pans to move up to medium, and we needed, actually, we needed 10 pans to move up to medium. Eh? But just, we are just say tenors. We say we'll buy five tenors, we'll buy four quadrophonics. Just five tenors at $5,000, which is not the price for a good tenor pan. 6,005 to 7,000. But I call it a cheap price. $5,000, five pan is 25,000. We have about 25 tenors in our room. And we on sponsor, we haven't had any money from San Fernando City Corporation in terms of sponsoring any pan. Not one pan here is sponsored by San Fernando City Corporation. So we have been working in fundraising, gigs, outside assistance company that I wouldn't mention because if I start to mention, I'd have to mention all. I don't want to leave out anybody, right? However, there is, one, there is a couple of mayors that would have passed through who would have found favor in San City or who would have realized the good work that we are doing and they would have sponsored in terms of helping us go to Panorama and give uh, money towards that and so on and so on. So I have to, to also say that there is a couple of mayors that passed through during the years that helped the ban and I wouldn't name them as well. Um, we are also supported, and this is important, we are also supported by the employees of San Fernando City Corporation. Because we have Jap there, who is from Carpenters, and if we say Jap, we need something built. Sometimes without even going to the head of department or, or head of, or, or who is his supervisor, he say, hey boy, come and take some thing here, rah, rah, rah. and they, he would send his men to help. Same with plumber, same with machine shop. So we find that in the different shops, we would get support from the persons who is in charge. And let's give those four men a round of applause, please. In terms of support, we can't leave all the parents. Parents, parents is the key to the success of San City. Sometimes a child might say to the parent, I ain't feeling to go today, now." Nah. And they would say, Mr. Man, change your clothes and get down in the pan yard. Let's give those parents a round of applause. Yeah. If we have parents like that all the time, all the pan yards in San Fernando would be good. We must give, we must give support, we must give kudos as well to Pantrin Mago, right? In particular, the president of Pantrin Bego, who during this crisis, he came down three times and visited the pan yard to make sure that things go in a particular way. Right? So let's give Mr. Keith Diaz a round of applause. And last, in terms of support, Let's give the union a round of applause. I, I don't need to say, say anything about the union because we had the union representative here today and he speak on behalf of the union and he's showing his full support. I will turn to Pan Camp now. We had start, started our Pan Camp in 2011 and was adopted by then mayor. The then mayor fund the finale aspect of the pan camp. Hence the reason for two years we named the finale the Mayor's Cultural Kids Show. 
Last year, we didn't have any finale. Because last year, we didn't get any funds for any finale. However, we haven't been getting funding or support for a while from San Fernando City Corporation for the, for the youths of San Fernando. Because of the economic crisis, we understand, and we haven't blamed them or, or, or insist that we get anything, and we're still not doing so. So we continued with our pan camp because although we, did, we, we might not have the finale, we insist that the education, the music education of San Fernando and environs must go on. So we have had, though we haven't had funding or support, we have had the camp go on from 2011, and we are going to have a pan camp in 2016. Right? Um, in this pan camp, we will be featuring music te theory and technology. And we would want to take our students into writing music on their laptops, right? Scoring out music on their laptops. So it would mean that we would need to get music programs. We, it would mean that the people who is coming to the class would probably most likely have to have their laptop. It would mean that we'd have to get a tutor. We'd have to pay a tutor to come and teach children how to score music on the computer, right? We need funding. And we are asking corporate Trinidad and Tobago to join with us so we could ensure that the camp is successful this year. We also have things like chairs and tables that we need for our camp. Our camp does usually be between 50 to 80 students, right? And we don't have enough chairs and tables to facilitate them. We would have enough pans, but we don't have enough chairs and tables. So we're asking asking corporate Trinidad and Tobago, and we are two asking San Fernando City Corporation to donate something. It, it don't have to be $10,000, it could be 1000 it could be 2000 and every little donation adds up, right? We, I would now like again to thank the mayor, Mr. Kazim, his worship, Mr. Kazim Hussein, for seeing the need, and not only seeing the need, but for acting in such a quick time to make sure that San City is up and running again. Right? I would like us to give him a round of applause again. Although, although I, 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 I would have preferred that we in Trinidad, and I'm, I'm, I'm not pinpointing any particular person, but I'm saying we all should be a little more proactive than reactive. If we are proactive, we would have foreseen the dangers in certain things, and we'd have made sure that everything is correct before the danger do happen, right? Um, but the reaction is also appreciated, and we thank you, Mr. Kazim Hussein. I would like to thank Mr. Governor, the engineer, who came, who, who were the, 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 the where we could say, the tool of getting the work done. I'd, I'd like to thank him and the contractors. Give Mr. Governor a round of applause. I'd like to appeal to the mayor that, that the work Mr. Governor and, and the contractor had also indicated that they would have secured the area. If you notice that the panyard is still open to not only people coming in, which is not too much of my concern, but when we have pan camp here, we would have children as young as five years. And if the area is not secured and somebody eyes stray, we could have an some sort of accident or some incident happening in the yard where a five-year-old stray because they want to play or so on so on so so we are appealing to the mayor to ask mr governor to come and finish the work that he started in terms of securing the pan yard we also ask corporate sponsors getting on board for for us to secure the pan yard as well and to help out with the pan camp right so 
I would like to call on Mr. DeCaries. Mr. DeCaries. I would like to call on Mr. DeCaries to bring the voter thanks and add any comments of value to the show. And after we finish the program, we'll have Sand City Youths play a few songs again. Uh, well, first of all, I want to say um, thanks to the mayor for the immediate response. Having based on, on the fact that everything reached a crisis level. I want to say special thanks to Mr. Governor, the, the work supervisor that was involved in refurbishing our yard within a weekend's time. Uh, I'd like to thank also everyone for attending, all the persons that, that address the audience, and made positive contributions. I'd like to thank Pleasantville Senior Sex for sending representatives. You know that we also host um, the Pleasantville Junior um, Band here for Panorama. In fact, four bands come out of here for Panorama. A junior band, a junior band, Pleasantville Steel Band, King's Row Retro Rhythm, Single Pan, and San City. Right? I uh, would like to, yeah, in closing, address um, some comments made by my brethren here, uh, Sudaka. Yes, we have a brand. And, and what you said, touch on what I said before. If you keep, we have a brand, but here where is the brand? Panorama is the brand. Where is the media here today? When was a crisis, we had all the media. It underscores what I said before, right? Where is the media here to, to, to carry this conversation? And therein lies the problem. There are bands out here with a brand. There, there are bands out here that can stand beside their works. But where is the promotion, right? And I want to underscore that by... Um, the fact that there is a conscious, a conscious resistance somehow against African culture in this country. And I'm I, I looking at the lo history of the local radio stations from, from, from Brother Superior to Radio Tempo to WAC. And if you know the history, you realize that people, certain people, the advertisers, and the, 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 the people who put money into advertising do not support local culture, especially Pan and Calypso. Right? So therein lies our problem where we are pigeonholed into a situation of ignominy, where nobody knows what you're doing. We don't have the resource to promote ourselves as, as we would like to. Of course, there's Facebook and so on there, right? That we can, but we need, what we need in this country right now, based on the breakdown of the community life of this country, we need, first of all, a disposition by the political directorate of this country to appreciate the value of sport, culture and community organization in the country and to treat them with respect. Don't treat them with political priorities. If, well, as a party man, I go get a thing. Don't treat them with condescending attitude, right? That kill community life. People like myself, they spend money out with pocket. We spend with life in doing what we're doing. We involve with children and with family into what we're doing. We enhance what resource around we to keep the thing going in the absence of proper focus on who we are, what we are, what is our value. And I'm speaking here now, not just for Pane, all community organization, because the fabric of life in the society is based on community cultural enterprises. Thank you. I hope that we will have your continued support.
Yeah, good evening, everyone. My name is Damien Sinclair. I'm a senior member of Sun City Steel Symphony. I've been playing for 25 years. Um, they call me the vice captain, but um, oh, that remains to be seen. Okay, well, today, well, if you're wondering why my face is like this in a horrendous mess, it's mainly because uh, preparing for the this event today that um, that was a success. Um, I was climbing up, uh, if you can, I don't, I'm not sure if you all can see it, but um, I was climbing up trying to put up some decorations and um, I was on a stand and while trying to come down, I m misbalanced and it fell backwards and I actually basically fell face first on the floor. On my right side of my face was damaged, I got stitches in two places on my face as well as um, some lacerations in my mouth, uh, swollen neck, shoulder, uh, uh, a little damage, I had about six x-rays, I had about four injections, but I'm feeling thankful. This is an event to basically commemorate, uh, I don't want to say a reopening of the yard, but you could call it that is something to give thanks to the people who who contributed to the yard being what it is now, because you all would have been heard in the media before that uh, we were having issues with the wall where it broke down and you know it's only when that it reached that stage then we got we got um, some help from the outward people, outward sources. The mayor was very helpful in bringing this event to our success. I'm sorry that you couldn't be here, but I am thanking them on behalf of San City. Okay, how about your children? Give him a nice hug. This is my daughter and this is my son.